Welcome to Electronline and in this video we're going to take a look at a lemnus gate that's created by a sine function rather than a cosine function in the previous video. So here we have the equation r squared equals 2 squared times the sine of 2 theta. And of course if we take the square root of both sides we get r equals 2 times the square root of sine of 2 theta. So what does that look like? Well to help us guide along um, we have a table here of values where we have the theta, so the various values for the angle either in degrees or in radians then twice theta, of course, because we have 2 theta in the equation, then the sine of 2 theta, then 4 times the sine of 2 theta, and then the square root. And so that would then be r equals the square root of 2 squared times the sine of 2 theta, which ends up being this equation right here. So now the lemnus gate for a sine function will not be um, drawn across the the x and y axis so to speak because to find the place where you have the first leaf of the lemnus gate what we're going to do is we're going to take 90 degrees and divide it by the number in front of the angle theta right there so divide by 2 which is equal to 45 degrees it's the same thing that we do with the rows uh, graph for to find the first leaf we take 90 degrees and divide it by the number in front of the angle theta so in this case it's 45 degrees which means the first leaf will appear on the line uh, the 45 degree line right here, so this is the angle, 45 degrees. And that will then contain the first leaf of the lemnus gate. Now, we can also take a look over here, when the angle is 45 degrees, to, twice the angle is 90 degrees, you can see that, that we have the maximum value for R, which is, co is coincident with the assumption here that that will have the first leaf. Now notice R will be 2 when the angle is 45 degrees, so might as well put a point right there. When the angle is 30 degrees, it's 1.86, so at 30 degrees, which is about this line right here, it's 1.86, so that's right there. At 60 degrees, it's also 1.86, so we can draw the line at 60 degrees right here, it's also 1.86, so you can see that this is going to look like that. And then we can see that at 90 degrees it is 0, and at 0 degrees it is 0, so then we can make the assumption that this will come in like this, at 90 degrees it's 0, and at 0 degrees at 0 as well. So there's the first leaf of the lemnus gate. Now notice what happens when we continue beyond 90 degrees. When we go to 135 degrees like this, 135 degrees of course is 45 degrees in this direction, we should again find a maximum value here, but notice in this case it's negative, and when we take the square root of a negative number of course we don't get a valid value. So the leaf that normally would be here is simply not going to be valid, and so we're going to go ahead and put a little dashed leaf there saying it's not really there, but that's what it would happen if we could draw the negative values as well. Then if we continue on to the next set of values beyond 180 degrees, the numbers turn positive again. So in this direction, we will also get a positive leaf like this or a positive value that we can take the square root of. And then again, when we get past to 270 degrees, again, we'll have something that looks like this where we'll have negative values, so we can't draw that. So ultimately, and let me use a different color to accentuate. You can then see that the lemnus gate is going to look like this on the one side and like this on the other side. And of course, those two don't count. And that is the lemnus gate for the equation r squared equals 2 squared times the sine of 2 theta. or take the square root of both sides, so you get that. And that's what the graph looks like. 